Hey guys, Chirag here. Hope you're having an amazing day. Hope you're safe. Uh, just wanted to jump in and tell you a little bit about the video before we dive in. Uh, so this video, I uh, sit down with three of my seniors from college. And these are people who I didn't necessarily interact with in college because they were super seniors. Uh, but after college, we reconnected because of the line of work we're doing. And it's not same, but kind of similar in a lot of ways. Uh, these three are the founders of uh, Travel, a very unique community-driven travel startup called Explore the Earth. And in this video, we uncover what this startup is all about and what their mission with the startup is and get a, amazing insights into, into uh, the world of traveling and how COVID is impacted. And to my surprise and to your surprise too, you will figure out that, you know, it's not all that bad. Hey, what's up everyone? This is Chirag Joshi here. This is episode number 26 of The Driven Show. And for the first time in show history, we have I have more than one person as a guest on the show. We have three people here, three amazing, amazing people, amazing seniors of mine from college. And uh, yeah, this episode is going to be fun, I hope so. And uh, it's going to be exciting. So thank you so much, Ismail, Saranj and Akshay for being on the show. Uh, thank you know, you. For making some history on the show by being by being the three first <laughs> by being the first three people on the show so it's it's always fun to see you guys it's always amazing to you know hear about what you guys are doing so uh, why don't why don't we uh, get it right into it and you know uh, we won't get into uh, the uh, explore the earth section right now we'll just talk about you know how how did you individually each of you individually reach to the point of uh, you know committing to be a part of explore there so why don't we do that maybe we start off from college or whenever the whole story started from each one of your ends so i think ismail we can start with you yeah, yeah, yeah. okay uh so college uh, i used to be pretty active towards theater and culturals and stuff uh never had i thought that this is what i'm planning to do after college but one thing that was constant uh, was traveling during college i think it's Pretty much for everyone, weekend trips and and when you are in Bangalore, there is tons of options all around you. So that started happening, and uh, from second or third year onwards, like I pretty much like looked forward to every trip that I can squeeze out of the busy schedule. And one mm -hmm. such trip was to Kurg in my second year, where Saranj was also with me. Uh, what happened was there was a big uh, taxi scam with us. Uh, mm -hmm. So. We got scammed by the taxi unions, basically, and uh, we were pretty pissed. We went to the police station on our holiday and we had to bring those guys here and there and all that ruckus happened. And the moment I came back, I decided this info needs to be out there so that no one else goes through what I went through. And that's how mm -hmm. I decided to like just write up a blog and keep it on the Internet mm -hmm. for ever and mm -hmm. ever as long as I can. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. when I just uh, created a very first blog post or blog or whatever you call it on that <clears throat> free platform wordpress.com not even then i think i think it was blogger.com by google mm -hmm. and i just typed all the details and what you should be careful of careful of and i typed my whole itinerary up and uh, i named that blog explore the earth because like it just came in my head and i just wanted to name it and uh, that mm -hmm. is how it started for me. Then I kept on adding every itinerary, every article on it. After college, about a year, I worked in a corporate job in Bangalore. And that's when I realized like I'm wasting my potential. All the things mm -hmm. that I did in college or learned or, you know, I wanted to try out. I'm not able to put in all those efforts. Yet. So then one fine day, mm -hmm. we, Akshay and I were talking at that time that uh, why are you just keeping it to a blog? Let's make it big. Let's do something crazy with that. And that's when I started realizing, okay, that this can have some more potential. Why don't I commit myself 100% towards it? And that's when I decided I'll leave my job for a while, experiment and give myself to explore the earth and see where it goes. So this was about mm -hmm. one and a half, two years back. And since then, okay. we have been working on explore the earth and that's where we are right now. <laughs> that was my Great. journey towards it. <laughs> Awesome. That sounds great. Yeah. That, that's great. 
So I think it'll be so so the so I'll be it'll be interesting to see you know so this is your part of the journey I think I'd like yeah. to hear Akshay say what's his piece of the story <laughs> yeah. that led to this Definitely. point. <laughs> okay, so back then I was working with my family business. We were into wholesale trade of all the decoration materials and handicrafts, local handicrafts, rakhi and such stuff. So which was very boring for me, and I just needed to get out of my two tier city and you know mm-hmm. just. have fun in life and that's when ismail and i were bouncing off some ideas for each other and so uh, when we spoke about the blog specifically it uh, what came to my mind was that uh, given i travel thrice a year or ismail travels say four to five times a year mm-hmm. it still be what we can still gather would be some information about nine places which are just our versions of it right mm-hmm. now if i want to go to gokarna then i'll maybe ring up some of my friend at and ask them what did you do before doing any research but what if i don't mm-hmm. have that friend so these couple of problems that we were discussing that that's what led to the idea of you know crowdsourcing the travel information from first hand travelers instead mm-hmm. of relying on websites which try to push commercial con- content and their packages as well so that's mm-hmm. how the idea was born and so we are quite brainstorming and you know discussing a few things before we actually started it so for about for about 3 to 4 months since uh, after ismail left the job and we shifted back to rajkot so it wasn't until like january that we were pretty serious about the idea mm-hmm. so it was mm-hmm. in january that i left my family business and ismail was mm-hmm. fully committed to explore the earth and we started giving our full time to it So that's been mm-hmm. my journey, Anit. That's great, awesome. That sounds amazing. Saransh, how how did you come into the picture? This all started right from college. Uh, in yeah. college, um, Ismail and I we did a lot of uh, these trips together. We went to Kurg, we went to Nijkal Beta, we went to Hoganikal Falls, we went to like a lot of places. And then all three of us we went to Go as well. Like that's ha- has to be the case. The basic of all trips. Uh, yeah. we did a lot of trips in college but there was never talk of xt or making a business out of it mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. now in college in general i was inclined towards finance and the only company that came for internship for us was goldman sachs so the mm-hmm. fact that they were of a finance background it helped me and i prepared for it and got in then mm-hmm. i got the placement offer as well from them so after college i worked for them for almost 2 years that's when ismail was working at prestige so almost every weekend the two of us used to hang out mm-hmm. bounce off a thousand ideas that anyone at one point in time be it at college after that have done so mm-hmm. i think we, we, we must have discussed about gyms restaurants and what not so mm-hmm. but but none of that really um, sort of you know held us to the extent that we would think okay yeah let's make a business out of it yeah we want to do this we think we we could keep going while doing that mm-hmm. uh none, none of that happened right so and then after some time this file went back to rajkot i was still working at goldman sachs um and then i think of almost a year later of that or i think 7 8 months i, I cannot remember the time but in any case akshay and this while well, they were bouncing up ideas they were like okay yeah the fact that all three of us love traveling so much want to do something around it now that we can and we have the time mm-hmm. like this is like if not now then when and these mm-hmm. were bring some ideas and they just came up with okay yeah let's just do this let's make mm-hmm. explore the earth a full on business why not trips mm-hmm. itineraries everything that that you may want to find regarding the travel business it would be there um mm-hmm. and it, it felt like a good idea at the time and which still has kept all of us going so mm-hmm. the two of them when they were bring some and came up with this they just sort of like i think the, the next week within a week of when they decided this this might ask me if if i wanted to join now working at goldman sachs having a secure job it isn't a straightforward trade off but when you look at it like you get to do something with people you trust you get to do something that mm-hmm. you like why not i mean it's worth giving a shot so that's yeah. how really i joined them like they approached me and were like if i wanted to do this and yes mm-hmm. so you first started there this was like yeah. Feb of last year Feb Feb 2019. Yeah. Okay. So Feb 2019 was was the year when officially you guys registered the company, and or was it a little later on? 
uh officially <laughs> we have not uh, yet even like uh, made it into so legally you are not registered yeah okay, okay, okay. right now we are not <laughs> because we are yet okay. to figure out the exact way we want ourselves portray like we are a brand mm-hmm. but uh, we can't say mm-hmm. is it a partnership between the three of us or are we like mm-hmm. corporate entity uh, yeah. so or are we digital creators you know because mm-hmm. what we are doing is quite dynamic in nature like we are mm-hmm. organizing trips and curating experiences for like personalized yeah. uh, groups at the same mm-hmm. time we are also creating digital content uh, like videos blogs mm-hmm. blogs and so much more so mm-hmm. we are not sure the exact right way to step in and we were about to this march i think uh, new financial year but then the whole mm-hmm. covid scenario happened and travel yeah. was at a standstill so mm-hmm. registering just went out of the picture for a while while mm-hmm. we were on the discussion but yeah it was somewhere yeah. in february of 2019 or uh, when mm-hmm. the whole concept or structurization of explore the earth took place that's mm-hmm. the tentative yeah. timeline yeah when all three of us mm-hmm. jumped in and we started operations on full scale and yeah. mm-hmm. that's great that's great that, that that sounds good i mean of course you know it, it's it's a great thing that i mean it's a great thing so that, i mean if if imagine if you guys would have sort of you know structured the whole company made it a private limited or all that and then covid struck that would have added a bit of financial pressure right so a lot, a lot, i mean yeah. I, i guess it's a blessing in disguise that you guys didn't do that <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Corona. <laughs> <laughs> so that's amazing. So, so explore. So, so why why don't you tell you know the community, everyone who's watching and listening, what Explore the Earth is all about? How did it start up? Start up. What was it all about? And uh, maybe then you know we can proceed to you know how's how has it changed? Has it changed or not? You know due to the situation we're currently dealing with. So, uh, yeah. why don't you tell me that? Okay. Um, it started as a travel blog. like at the very nascent stage mm-hmm. then it moved on to a crowd sourced travel blog where mm-hmm. everyone can contribute an itinerary and everyone can refer to that those itineraries by the people for the people mm-hmm. that was the yeah. initial conceptualization so that we keep mm-hmm. getting more and more content in which is personalized mm-hmm. which is one on one it's as good as yeah. your friend texting mm-hmm. you a full plan for any x destination you can refer yeah. to each other's itineraries that was what the initial structure and plan was uh, mm-hmm. it went well but the problem we found was uh, developing the whole structure as well mm-hmm. as uh, the revenue side of it we couldn't mm-hmm. come up with a solid 100% efficient revenue plan and we were mm-hmm. not yet too ready to risk uh, like a big funding investment behind that mm. so we mm-hmm. s- decided to change things or switch up a, mm-hmm. a little bit what we did was started mm-hmm. establishing a physical community to make mm-hmm. the brand popular so we decided yeah. to explore the earth literally like we went mm-hmm. to offbeat places where mm-hmm. there is almost new, no utilities or they are off the grid so we started with yeah. a place called shivrajpur in gujarat Mm-hmm. that's a mm-hmm. rarely visited beach uh, you have to mm-hmm. take a dirt road of 4 kilometers into the like mm-hmm. barren stretch of land and then you turn mm-hmm. out on the beach so the nearest mm-hmm. people around you are like 17 to 20 kilometers away the nearest smallest settlements of fishermen also and mm-hmm. the whole beach is such a beautiful place in gujarat that in last one and a half year it has gone off the charts in terms of the tourism activity which it mm-hmm. boosted up uh there yeah. were dolphins on the shore living there oh. there were coral mm-hmm. reefs discovered at the beach so recently some scuba diver associations have started venturing mm-hmm. into the beach so now it's getting the popularity so such places yeah. we wanted to explore the earth and we wanted to take people along and like minded people along mm-hmm. so we organized x trips that was our first mm-hmm. x trips in gujarat to shivrajpur mm-hmm. where we take a group of about 15 to 25 a small group of like minded mm-hmm. people and from diverse fields but who are mm-hmm. interested in truly exploring the earth and we started yeah. building such physical communities and since then we have done almost like a, a trip a month so 12 to 10 mm-hmm. to 12 trips uh, in last year mm-hmm. all in different locations yeah. we were two in gujarat then we came to bangalore mm-hmm. because we had good uh, network of people around bangalore mm-hmm. and we also went mm-hmm. up north uh, mm-hmm. one trip was manali to lay cycling which yeah. only the three oh. of us did it but uh, mm-hmm. there was one more trip called uh, sethan sethan is a small tiny mm-hmm. skiing village near manali 
uh, where we stayed for like four days, mm-hmm. uh, got a skiing course. We hired instructors and kept them like, you know, took them to the slopes mm-hmm. and then we had the place to ourselves kind of like that. Mm-hmm. So we started building physical community. And at the same time, we thought we'll first create our content. So we started mm-hmm. on blogs, blogs and genuine quality content as creators from our end mm-hmm. to display it to our community that yeah. this is what we create. Now you mm-hmm. also have an option to create your content on our platform. So yeah. we were working on creating that brand since last few months where we built mm-hmm. a physical community and we also produce travel content in terms of yeah. articles and videos. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. where we are right now, but we have a long yeah. way to go. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a great. I mean, w- w- the first time I heard about, you know, what uh, Explore the Earth does, you know, in terms of, yeah. I especially like the whole itinerary thing because, you know, you hardly get, uh, you know, sort of curated itineraries to any given yeah. place, no? So, yeah, in fact, I don't even remember... I don't even remember, you know, having itineraries. Usually these travel sites, they just type out something and, you know, you have to follow it. And, and who knows and, it's true and, or not, right? And uh, there will be uh, those paywalls, you know. Uh, yeah. Go up package, three days, five nights, 5,000, popping up exactly. all on your screen, chat boxes opening exactly. up. Hey, what are you looking mm-hmm. for? We can plan a Goa trip for you. And mm-hmm. it's all exactly. commercial bombarding of content that happens rather mm-hmm. than genuine travel content yeah. on the internet, especially exactly. in countries like India. If you go mm-hmm. outside India, there is a good uh, amount of blogs competing against mm-hmm. big firms but in india it's mm-hmm. completely dominated by the big companies of travel yeah yeah no that's, that's great i mean that itinerary solve. itinerary part is great you know i suppose yeah i mean i mean for anyone listening or, or you know watching this episode if you want to go to a particular place or if you've already been to a particular place i mean you know feel free yeah. to go ex- sort of you know get to their website explore the earth you'll find it explore with an x starts with an x, x not an e yeah yes we have that x factor so always x. starts with an x <laughs> so so you, you can visit their website and you know type in your itineraries of places you visited and you know really help out other travelers so yeah. i mean that sort of a community approach is something i always love you know because i think when you involve a community, you know, it's just the, the, the impact of it just becomes compounded. Yeah, you know? yeah. Like there's a domino, just, ripple, ripples. Ex- ex- a ripple effect, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so that's, that's always a great thing to have. Now, uh, w- what's one of the uh, best trips, of course, in our way, this is the Man- I mean, it's, it's got to be the Manali to Leva, <laughs> and I'm just exaggerating to Oh, by the way, uh, Akshay and Saranj, don't make this a corporate video, feel free to jump in and, you know, <laughs> have Ismail mute out, so... Yeah, no, please. No Otherwise, that. you know how I go. Like. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard <Yeah>. to mute me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so um, before we jump to Manali to Leh, I wanna, I wanna start with uh, Akshay. So, Akshay, uh, what is it that you know you handle on, on or you know, what are the roles and responsibilities you've taken up at uh, Explore the Earth? So, if you can, you know, tell us about what, what is it that you handle. Okay, so pre-COVID, I was mostly into organizing part of the X trips and I used to book the vendors I used to handle the registrations I handle a little bit of marketing but mm-hmm. now post COVID since we don't know when we'll go out again now I'm yeah. looking into and learning a lot more about SEO to boost mm-hmm. our website and the blog part of it so mm-hmm. yeah currently you can say I'm just learning and Great. figuring out so pushing the SEO knowledge in the company mm-hmm. Okay, okay. That's awesome. Uh, Saranj, how about you? What, what are you taking care of uh, at Explore the Earth? I would divide it in pre-COVID and post-COVID as well. So post-COVID, mm-hmm. I think all of us are pretty much on the same page. The fact that we are trying to boost our site in general, like through SEO yeah. and the likes so of writing the blogs, making up all that content, scripting the videos. Editing part is mostly a smile, but... Uh, mm-hmm. Other than that, we could help uh, like scripting the videos and the like. Uh, mm-hmm. Other than that, it's content uh, as we spoke about the itineraries that are from the various places, um, mm-hmm. be it Sikkim, anywhere else that somewhere I've been to, and they can write mm-hmm. about it. Other than that, we've been like collaborating with others wherein we write an article, we take their comments, maybe put in there, and all of those things. All right. So mm-hmm. this this one of those articles that. Um, I would say we actually have written, like this was pre-COVID, but, but mm-hmm. is one of the articles that we put a lot of effort in. 
uh, and is one of my favorites would be uh, the responsible traveling article wherein mm -hmm. we we collaborated with quite a few uh, companies be it Trippy Wheels, Zostel, mm -hmm. um, Trek the Himalayas and the likes wherein we are taking their comments uh, as to how they approach responsible traveling and mm -hmm. how in general a traveler could go about and making sure that they maybe have the least carbon footprint, they can give back something to the community and the like. But in any case, as for my role pre-COVID, mm -hmm. so pre-COVID, my role was exactly this, about the written content uh, that we were producing on our website, uh, be it itineraries as well as the content in general. Mm -hmm. That's great. Sounds good. So when you say responsible traveler, so I mean, why don't you, I mean, like, you know, sort of introduce people what responsible traveling actually is and, you know, how can one be a responsible traveler? Yeah. So responsible traveling, um, one can look at it in a number of ways. All right. So now mm -hmm. responsible traveling for me would be if I am traveling to an XYZ place, when I go there, I make sure that as far as the environment goes, I'm using, let's say, the least amount of a plastic mm -hmm. uh, or any test thing. Like, so, uh, okay, in one of our interviews that we did um, regarding this, like a person told this, that uh, when we think about uh, cutting down on plastics that we are using and the like, it starts with not buying them in the first place, mm -hmm. right? You, you could recycle a number of things once you've purchased yeah. them and feel good about it that you are recycling mm -hmm. it or putting in a bin where it says it will get recycled. But yeah. in the first place, if you do not buy that plastic bottle and mm -hmm. have your own bottle that you could refill every now and then, mm -hmm. there is no substitute to it or there's, there isn't an alternative that is better than that. So yeah. for me, it starts with small things like this. Now, mm -hmm. uh, if someone smokes, right? So one of the travelers that we met uh, on Manali to Leh Highway, he did this, that he made sure that all the cigarette butts uh, mm -hmm. that were to be left of like the people throw on the ground or that himself that he used to do at one point in time. He made sure now mm -hmm. that he is more, um, let's say, um, environment friendly or more aware about these things, that mm -hmm. he collects all of those buds and makes sure that he puts them at the end of the day in a place where they can get recycled and not just leave them on the road where there is just no chance of them decomposing at all. And like mm -hmm. when you're talking about a, uh, like, uh, so this was on the Manali Le Highway, right? So when you are talking about mm -hmm. a place as pristine as that, you, you would want to preserve that. Mm -hmm. I mean, exactly. I, I, that isn't to say that if I'm staying in Noida or Delhi, that a metropolitan mm -hmm. city sh shouldn't be yeah. preserved. But I would say they're at a point of past preservation. Now mm -hmm. all you can do is make sure you do not add it to it. Like, yeah. the, I mean, that's about it. So that's what I'm saying. Like mm -hmm. when you go to these places, I cannot expect you that you wouldn't buy a single plastic bottle. Maybe you would need to, but mm -hmm. if you cut down on them as much as you can or anything else related to that, that'll be nice. So that's one, right? Yeah. That's about the eco-friendly part of things. Now, when it comes to responsible mm -hmm. traveling, another aspect that you can add to it is giving back to the local community, right? Mm -hmm. So now if you are going to Manali, you can always choose to stay in the most luxurious hotel that the place might offer. But at mm -hmm. the same time, you could also choose to stay in a place which is uh, handled by the locals. Like maybe it may be a two star, uh, let's say hotel at best to stay, but that's fine. All you need to do is sleep at night, right? So as long as they're providing you with a blower, a heater, you could sleep mm -hmm. without any problem. You have the mattress, mm -hmm. you have a place is hygienic. Like even a two star hotel, it isn't that the, they lack in hygienic. Uh, sort of things, but rather other facilities like a pool or anything else that you might be looking for. So you mm -hmm. do not really need that. So mm -hmm. it is more like you should start, um, you know, staying in places which are more from the community themselves than from like some four star, five star hotel chain coming from outside and saying of their place. There. Now, and yeah. I'm not saying they go harm their business, but I'm saying it would help the community at the very least. Mm -hmm. So things like yeah. that. And then one simple thing like this, like you could put it under community, but like one simple thing that, that I like respect the most, when you go to a place and you speak to the locals there, I mean, not because you 
want to know the direction or anything else but rather you you're just chatting up with them getting to know them if even if you give them like 5 to 10 minutes of your time i i assure you like i mean uh that would make their day as well as yours because you learn something from them they learn something from you and and the fact that they are being so hospitable to you at the very least you can do is you get to know them mm-hmm. like i mean i think that's what all of these trips are about right like you are not there yeah. only, not only to see what the nature has to offer or what um, mm-hmm. you know things the city in general has to offer but what mm-hmm. people of that particular place has to offer so for me yeah. responsible traveling within like these couple things three things what sum up how i would go about it mm that's great that sounds great um ismail what would you tell me what would you handle uh for explore the earth yeah so i am mostly behind the, the digital content that pours out from xt uh the mm-hmm. social media feed uh the youtube videos are mm-hmm. mostly my domain uh so any content requirements graphics uh, posters or any of the digital media is mm-hmm. mostly falling on to me and uh, mm-hmm. yeah that has been before and after covid so it has hasn't mm-hmm. changed me for me much uh yeah. and apart from that uh, initially when we just started out i was working mm-hmm. on the website as well but then mm-hmm. i once we had the three of us so we divided our roles and i just stuck to the social mm-hmm. and uh, the creation yeah. part of it mm-hmm. right now it's Sounds all good. we are focusing more on the creation part right now so all three of us yeah actually. yeah i'm sure you know i mean uh, before we jump into the covid part of things uh, yeah. i know i mean i just want to tell everyone listening and watching that you know i mean manali to leh has been the highlights of you know <laughs> xte of you yeah. guys personally of you know the viewers of, of us watching your vlogs it's been a great thing so i don't want to reiterate and plus you put out a vlog so you know i mean you guys can watch it and <laughs> add the link here but uh, what i want to know is you know each of you individually what was the one best thing of the entire trip for you individually each one of you okay so smile we can start with you what was the one best thing? you can't do everything you have got one the <laughs> best thing best part of that trip for you that's that's a tough spot you put me in like <laughs> cause every day offered something so great that it's hard you just to... have to pick one oh <laughs> god <laughs> okay let me think so i think the most i remember about the journey uh would be the people i met and uh, you know it it had a wonderful experience i had a wonderful experience with the people usually i am a mm-hmm. person who stays away from the people when i'm traveling mm-hmm. or wherever i'm traveling to i choose places which are less crowded and secluded and i like mm-hmm. time with the place rather than the yeah. people and the culture of it uh, mm-hmm. but on this trip even though i was not actively trying to meet new people the people i met were and because we were on cycles uh it attracted a certain crowd who would be like minded like us or you know who are traveling at mm-hmm. the same pace as us and because mm-hmm. of that i did meet a lot of people from homestay owners uh, staying in the most secluded places to local mm-hmm. shepherds uh, who had barely left that region for their whole last few generations maybe mm-hmm. and uh, the foreigners we met uh, so we met a lot of cyclists who were doing the mm-hmm. same route as us all the way from korea and us and germany so all these people we were camped up together at night we had the whole mm-hmm. night to ourselves and listening to mm-hmm. their stories and their ways of traveling uh did leave a mark on me and even mm-hmm. in lay the ho- hostel owner uh we stayed at yeah. hearth hostels so purnima was the owner quite impressed with the people i met usually Uh, i had traveled more towards south and south is mm-hmm. a little more commercialized or the places i've been to were a little more commercialized yeah. like kur koda you know agu karna mm-hmm. goa all these places were a lot mm-hmm. more commercialized than what where we were and because of that this experience with the local people and the local culture who was mm-hmm. not a metro crowd or not used to so much tourism that was a whole unique experience that i personally mm-hmm. liked and the highlight was of course that uh, the in the people category itself uh we were lucky to have a glimpse at the lai lama uh, oh, yeah, the the lai man. lama <laughs> yeah we were sitting at a daba in a place called debring 
that's about mm-hmm. 150 kilometers from le before we reach le it's in, in middle of mm-hmm. nowhere it's like complete desert mm-hmm. all around just a three four tents we were sipping our teas and suddenly the huge caravan of monks and flags and procession just comes and stops behind us we were like oh. okay might be a community thing or something might be going mm-hmm. on we'll inquire once the locals are free the locals were all rushing there and the mm-hmm. whole caravan again passed and in the front car it was a luxurious sedan type of thing and in the front a person was sitting and he was looking at us and we were we had cups of tea in our hand and we were <laughs> looking at who was going by <laughs> and then the whole <laughs> procession comes out and dalai ji dalai ji dalai lama ji <laughs> and we were screaming and running behind and we were like oh shit let you get a picture <laughs> But yeah, that was the highlight, I guess. <laughs> Great. That sounds good. That's um, awesome. <laughs> Lovely to hear that, you know, people yeah. were the highlight of the trip. Yeah. Uh, awesome. Akshay, why don't you tell us what was the one big, uh, you know, takeaway special part for you for uh, uh, the Manali to Leh trip? Okay, so a little background. I was never into cycling or doing <laughs> any sort of cycling. physical exertion of this level but mm-hmm. anyway we are here and <laughs> if i took the strategic one the people part of it so i'll tell you the lazy i'll tell you the lazy part of it so mm-hmm. this was on the our second last day we had 20 kilometers of tiring uphill followed mm-hmm. by 60 kilometers of downhill oh, we okay. just had to sit on our bikes <laughs> and there was like the end of all the uphill that we had to go through in yeah. this entire journey we had to we had scaled the last mm-hmm. pass so now all we had to do was sit on our yes. bikes and <laughs> you know enjoy the coming back of vegetation and we were mm-hmm. passing through this place called hemis national park mm-hmm. so we had mountains on both the sides with reddish maroonish color and vegetation was coming back so from all the barren lands that we had passed through so it started with mm-hmm. a very dark lush green forest to mm-hmm. bare snow then bare rocks and then this part of it so we could finally you know instead of focusing on st- breathing and mm-hmm. what not and like stopping every 100 meters all i had to do was just sit and for <laughs> like one i was uh, ahead of these two because of course i'm here <laughs> so for 50 kilometers and half a day it was a bliss you know it's an actually <laughs> very good place so if someone's going to lay i would highly recommend that they stay in one of these villages in mm. the hamish hamish national park because it's mm. just so beautiful yeah so that mm. was like one of my favorite days of the whole journey that's amazing you know that's that's good i mean that's good enough i can imagine you know well so much of tiring cycling going on 60 kilometers downhill the wind in your hair and you like, know great scenery all around i can imagine you know. for all the uh, hard days i had that we had <laughs> yeah and good pay off also like we were returning to the network area so we would get mm-hmm. our uh, signals back and we could finally call mm-hmm. home and our friends mm-hmm. were worried as hell because mm-hmm. we were off the grid for like seven whole days and they had yeah. no clue so yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> that's great that no that i think i think that always happens in travel you know like uh, i mean i don't know I, i think this my dad told me or this might be copied from some movie but they're like you know uh, hindi wala safar karne mein english wala safar zarur hoga you know so that's like ah, the that's that he says <laughs> so yeah every so, day bring some new challenge and what but i think you tackle it is what you will remember actually yeah after yeah, every but i think the payoff is great you know as you said you know yes, the, the last bit when you're ending it you know there's always i mean it, it never disappoints you basically you know even though yeah. it's hard this and that you know never disappoints you right yeah exactly that's, yeah. A, that's a good thing it's uh, very saran. rewarding feel yeah mm-hmm. saran what was your best part you? of the trip yeah I, i had a lot of time to think about but i'll still tell you the first thing that came to my mind okay mm-hmm. so i think this was when again we were thinking of doing this we hadn't finalized the date and then uh these two they were like we have booked our tickets our train tickets to delhi for 7th of july mm-hmm. and that was like what not even like 
they must have told me this 10 days before the 7th of July. Okay. Mm-hmm. We were always planning to do this, but I was like, this might just end up being one of those trips where you plan a thousand times and you do not, <laughs> do not yeah. end up going. Okay. <laughs> And when these guys tell me they've booked their train tickets, I'm like, okay, this is getting real <laughs> now. Mm-hmm. And as lazy as I am, I still didn't choose to prepare myself at all for this particular <laughs> trip. One of the reasons I didn't have a bicycle. The last time mm-hmm. I had cycled was in 12th standard, which was like at the time, maybe five years or so uh, mm-hmm. before then we were going to do this trip. Okay. And now when we were about to reach Manali, like before that, two days before that, we actually bought our cycles. Mm-hmm. A couple of days we did cycle in Manali, like a few mm-hmm. kilometers here and there. But that was the extent of our preparation for a trip yeah. that we were going to take, which is like pro cyclists dream of doing, you know, doing yeah. this route, like in all, in all its beauty. So mm-hmm. for me, this particular trip was about resiliency at that like mental resilience all right Mm -hmm. because my body like none of our bodies for that matter because we bought a cycle two days before the trip were prepared for this particular ride right Mm -hmm. so we were going to do what 470 odd kilometers on a bicycle which had uphill downhill and mind you like our uphill speed wasn't more than four four and a half kilometers per hour kilometers Mm -hmm. per hour all right Mm -hmm. and the amount of traffic that in certain sections of the highway is there, trucks are ready to push you off the cliff. Like they mm-hmm. wouldn't care less that you are there mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. if they stop, they'll have a like a lot harder time to again uh, pick up the speed yeah. up, on an uphill. So like, I mean, it's not their fault, but they wouldn't stop either for you. So yeah. given all this, we weren't physically prepared at all to do this. However, like, like first days I remember, like I'm quite sure my thighs were screaming with pain. Like, but we didn't have a choice but to but to go forward. Otherwise, we'll be stuck there. And that yeah. is the reason. Like, the people they cover um, a stretch from Manali to Mari. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, that's like about forty kilometers. They do it in the mm-hmm. first day. We did that mm-hmm. in two days because no, none none of us <laughs> yeah. were actually prepared for this, and the fact that we were lazy enough to start late on the first day. Mm-hmm. Like both these things. But yes, we did that in two days, and obviously, like I know personally, my thighs were gone and <laughs> amongst all of this what kept us going is the fact that all around us we could see such beauty and the fact that we had it in our brains that we need to do this and we want to do this because of so much what we have heard about is it true or not yeah. we, we do want to find that we do not want to mm-hmm. turn back now and be like okay we are not able to do it we just yeah. like we could we could have gone back then right like it was what mm-hmm. 40 kilometers and that's all we, we still had 430 kilometers in front of us but mm-hmm. at that point in time, like it was difficult, but we did go through it. Like there were, yeah. I, I remember times. So I mean, I'll give you just another example, okay, to show like uh, how much important when you are doing this Manali to lay cycling, physical preparation mm-hmm. is important, but how much more important is your mental resilience towards all of this? Uh, now we were going from, we were going from Sarchu to Whiskey Nala, right? Now, Search you to Whiskey Nala, you need to cross a pass which goes by the name Nakila. Okay, so La means pass and Naki is the name of the pass. Mm-hmm. Nakila. Now, for all these days, we had an offline map. We knew how many kilometers are we going to cover. Uh, we already had an idea how much of it is going to be uphill, how much of it is going to be down. Now, mm-hmm. for this particular day, we knew that, I, I cannot remember the exact number, but we knew that these many kilometers is what we need to cover to reach Nakila. For all the passes on this particular highway, the Google pin for the like the pass with the name is when you reach at the top. For this mm-hmm. particular pass, it's about a few kilometers before that. Okay. And the fact that we just assumed that this Google pin is going to be the top, we were like, that would be the end of our uphill. Mm-hmm. And oh boy, those last few kilometers from that Google <laughs> pin to the actual top. <laughs> were excruciating. I mean, mm-hmm. I remember like stopping literally, like like Akshay said, every 70 to 100 meters. Like you just cannot do it because you mentally just didn't mm-hmm. think that you'll have to do mm-hmm. this much. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm just saying like if you were not mentally prepared for something for that particular yeah. day, it's, it's going to come back to haunt you. So that's what happened yeah. there. So like I think that was the only day we were not prepared because we actually didn't know what was going to happen because of the Google mm-hmm. But other than that, like just the beauty of the place and the vibes like mm-hmm. you could 
easily go through all this like without mm-hmm. without any problem so for me yeah. it's all about mental resilience or something like that mm-hmm. that's great that's great like, i can relate to yeah, that I, I, i could have picked one place and told you that that was the most beautiful place but then that would be quite an injustice to the highway in general because i mm-hmm. could remember like vividly each and every days and the colors they brought that brought like they brought with them like mm-hmm. it, you just cannot pick one like as a small yeah. action that you just cannot do that no no i relate to that because you know i mean you and i had a similar experience where you know I, we cycled from kormangala to nandi hills like right on the top and then back you know that's insane stuff this was in first year of college with my cousin so for me that was about how mad it gets i mean you guys just went all blown complete crazy with this so how was your cycle how did that go ah uh, uh, it's it's a long time ago and it was again it was, i i could relate to every word that you were saying excruciating you know <laughs> mental resilience yeah i could feel that that was exactly how it was oh, it, was, like, it was tiresome it was tiresome um that's great so uh, actually you know unfortunately my battery is dying and uh, my internet my auto also give up so but i don't want to cut this short so i'll try my best to uh heading over to sort of like the towards the end of the video what i want to do is you know maybe get each one of your input now that covid has struck you know now that this has happened not your inputs on sort of you know where exactly uh, xte is heading but where do you think sort of you know uh, actually no what, what we can do is you know how do you think how do you individually how do you think you know so, uh, travel will now include sustainability or you know responsible traveling in a big way going forward and what role do you think do you want uh, xt to play in it so if you could if you could you know tell me about that you know in how how, how is travel heading into this new post covid world how are the, how is the industry coping up and how is it trying to incorporate much more sustainable responsible ways of traveling and safer ways of traveling of course and then you know how does xte uh, want to play a role in it and maybe you know lead the way in it so saran will start with you okay? so, Yeah sure. So if you'd actually uh, google this all right um what may be the travel trends and anything else to talk about eco tourism or traveling responsibility or giving back to the local community or being friendly to the environment that you're traveling in in general all of this was already happening pre covid So these trends were already on the up because yeah. like our generation uh they know like we we like with all the talks about climate climate mm-hmm. change how it's affecting us um and its effects all of us know that it's real and we need not have trump mm-hmm. tell us that right yeah so the fact that it's already here all of us already have the notion that we need to do something about it now one mm-hmm. option is you stop traveling but obviously that isn't going to help so you need to be mm-hmm. uh, more smart about it and find ways that you do not harm the environment at all you have the least possible yeah. footprint carbon footprint and yeah. you're still able to travel so all of these talks mm-hmm. were already like very much on the up before mm-hmm. however yeah. after covid what we are speaking about now is how all of this can be safe in terms of you not contracting a virus right mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. and the fact that now uh, we may we are looking at a possibility of a world wherein um a lot more companies are open to the idea of working from home right mm-hmm. when you allow when you allow your employees to work from home when you realize the fact that all they need is a laptop and not not much else you open up to quite a few possibilities so one such trend that you might see is on the up now is something they refer to as staycations so what um, mm-hmm. like yeah. people are starting to offer is that you can go on a vacation Mm-hmm. uh and essentially what you're doing is you're get, let's say getting one rather let's say oh you are taking off a week from your home rather than off yeah. right now you're yeah. already yeah. working all you need is a laptop the fact that all you need is laptop and internet you can work from anywhere and this particular remote location that you've chosen to work as long as it has internet you can work from there for a week or a month whatever so you choose so this trend of vacations is now coming up as well um mm-hmm. and a lot of these resorts um uh, that are shut right now because people are obviously not visiting are trying to rebrand themselves as places where people can come and work you know yeah. do not have to be like um in too much social 
contact is extended that you can contract a virus but at the same time you can work and get uh, outside of your homes for a change so all of these things um, they are starting to come up um, yeah yeah i think that's that's pretty much uh, what what i would think of it at least yeah. at this point in time that makes sense no that that's good i mean even i have even i've heard of that you know the staycation trend clearly you know some people have suggested in fact we've thought you know me and my cousin let's just go off to go off for a month chill on the beach and work you know so so See, yeah, i mean yeah, clearly people are thinking clearly people are thinking in that i mean age. like along these lines like if you could talk about trekking and the like a lot of it is going to change as well like now trekking is a sport wherein um, a group goes together right it has to be together for it to be fun for for the group to make yeah. sure that everyone comes through to whatever they they are doing like some treks they are relatively easy some treks you actually like i can tell from personal experience you need a group to make sure that you get to the top like in all your spirits like like yeah. like if i were to do a couple of these treks alone i might get to the top but i would never be as happy as i was just to do it with that group mm-hmm. so like yeah. things like trekking they are going to change to a certain extent because now like until now like everything was being done together right now they'll have to take certain measures to make sure that mm-hmm. everyone is fine there is no problem affecting mm-hmm. or anything yeah. else so all of these things like i'm not sure like how how would it look uh, once we all, all of the tracks resume again but but all of this is going to change for mm-hmm. yeah makes sense makes sense Akshay, uh, what what do you think is going to be the biggest impact uh, of COVID is going to have, and what are the trends and you know ways in which the industry is coping up, or hope, or or you know ways in which you think the industry should cope up? Okay, so the first um, big disadvantage that COVID will have as an impact on the tourism industry would be people trying to avoid public transport. and longer trips of course so mm-hmm. all the major and very touristy places might see a lot of lot less footfall even in their season times and peak times yeah. and given that public transport wouldn't be the favorite mode of transport anymore for at least some mm-hmm. time mm-hmm. the local places or the hidden gems that your maybe your grandparents would be talking about that we used to go to mm-hmm. this banks of this river or used to go to this forest at this mandir uh, so these places i can already see they are picking up so uh, mm-hmm. so this is one thing that people want to go out in any way and people want to get fit so mm-hmm. one major change that i can see right now is that people are rushing to the bicycle stores and mm-hmm. everyone wants a cycle yeah. every weekend True. you you know they want to go and explore a nearby village and especially that uh, given that most of india is pretty hot so monsoons mm-hmm. are quite green and very pleasant to you know take a ride mm-hmm. to nearby village and we see yeah. people going to some uh, nearby sm- very uh, small hills and a mm-hmm. few patch or uh, a small patch of trees and you know having that Uh, yeah. feel of wanderlust that they haven't mm-hmm. had inside their homes mm-hmm. for quite some months yeah. and of course the staycation trend is coming up you can see mm-hmm. that people used to go to a co-working space in a cosmopolitan place like bangalore or mumbai or mm-hmm. delhi but now hostels are turning into co-working spaces and people are mm-hmm. going to literally co-live and co-work with yeah. people from different companies at say 5000 meters or uh, on <laughs> yeah. some beach so that's pretty cool mm-hmm. i guess yeah yeah that's that yeah that, that that makes sense uh you know the fact that you spoke you know people definitely are turning more to cycling uh, and cycling allows you to not travel thousands of kilometers it allows you to travel hundreds of kilometers so you know i think that will boost a lot of tourism in the localities around the you know metro city or any yeah. big city so that is yeah. clearly going to be a great thing in fact you know i'd like to do that myself you know take a cycle out go to some place nearby and you know, just just about any place that gives you the feeling of nature you know it, it yeah. doesn't even have to be a place outside the city yeah. maybe as long as you are not in a concrete jungle people are you know <laughs> happy and yeah. yeah and how we would like to contribute to it is by creating some content and providing information mm-hmm. that people can actually rely on so 
stop remote places to visit around Bangalore mm-hmm. on your weekend yeah. or on your bicycle. So we want mm-hmm. to work on content such as this. That makes sense. Yeah. And not just Bangalore. We want to work on content that mm-hmm. is helpful to people in tier 2 cities and tier, ones, uh, tier 3 cities as well. So uh, mm-hmm. let's uh, see how it goes. Yeah, no, that definitely, you should definitely do that. Thank you so much. Ismail, quickly tell us yeah. what, what, I, what, what are your thoughts on the same. Yeah, so yeah. these guys covered a lot of things. I think the <laughs> major changes will be uh, traveling in smaller groups. Uh, the Indian trend of traveling in large groups of 50s and mm-hmm. 100s or family groups of like 10 families going mm-hmm. together on a trip, that's mm-hmm. going to change to smaller groups. Uh, shorter r- routes and locations. Uh, nearby places mm-hmm. will be mi- visited more than from interstate travel will decrease basically. Mm-hmm. Uh, other than that, I think uh, players like us, you know, uh, um, who take 15 to 20 are booming even through the COVID crisis because they can mm-hmm. offer local travel options mm-hmm. and they can cater to smaller groups. A big company mm-hmm. cannot afford that. So I think that's mm-hmm. a change I have been seeing amongst people like us yeah uh, other yeah. than that uh, yeah so and other than that uh, what i am seeing is the concept of traveling is changing for everyone uh, even though slowly but in every traveler the, uh, people are seeing traveling as tra- uh, like creating their own itinerary now previously mm-hmm. it used to be the checking of bucket list now it's like for Mm -hmm. yourself because people realize Mm -hmm. like what it makes us without travel till now Mm -hmm. before covid people were having that thought okay goa trip banta hai ladakh trip banta hai Mm -hmm. thailand jana hai ye jana hai Mm -hmm. now it's becoming like four months i've been to myself and i just as you said i just want some nature and peace and quiet Mm -hmm. for me rather than Mm -hmm. this trip and that grandeur so that Mm -hmm. shift that's a good shift, I yeah. think, personally. Yeah. That rather than traveling to show off, people will be traveling mm. to actually get a change in perspective in their mind. So these are mm-hmm. the changes I think COVID has brought. Some are good, some are bad, but hopefully will mm-hmm. turn out hopeful from yeah. this. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's great. No, I love the fact that you said, you know, the meaning of travel will change for people and it's gonna and I think the importance of travel will be realized by people you know I mean yeah, maybe yeah. before it was just to chill but now it's really you know people understand you know how impo- I mean I understand how it I mean I love yeah. traveling but you know even <laughs> I'm not such a frequent traveler but I understand that you know now when I get a chance I'm gonna be much more responsible when I go there I'm gonna enjoy much more of the local yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. meet the local people eat the local food you know just 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 get immersed in their culture because that's who we are as human beings right like we yeah. love exploring we love you know understanding uh, different people's cultures and you know True. for a while just getting away from who we yeah. always are in cities and all of that so i think that we had kind of forgot out. forgot that because of um, the social media and abundance of information yeah. pouring out at us yeah. but this exactly. pause was a good thing to make us realize that mm-hmm. so the industry has taken a hit but I think it's yeah. going to turn out more valuable in the mm-hmm. future. Yeah, yeah, that's great. It's, so it's kind of like a blessing in disguise in a lot of ways. <laughs> yeah. And I think especially you guys, you guys can definitely, you know, capitalize on this. So I was getting into the podcast. I felt that, you know, maybe, you know, I think XT has taken a major hit. They might be, you know, uh, they might they might be running out of options here. Yeah. But I think <laughs> toward the end, I feel that, you know, you guys actually have a very strong play now. Now that, you know, a lot of bigger players have hit. I'm sure a lot of companies have shut down in the travel space, you know, so that gives you opportunity True. to grow and, Definitely. Uh, you know, you were anyway into the whole local, uh, uh, you know, transportation, you know, building up the local guys, visiting the local communities, being responsible and all of that holistic approach to traveling. I think that makes even more sense right now and I think people will be looking out for something like that, you know. Now people won't venture out on their ki nahi bhai mere ko malum hai, hotel wale ko janta hon chalte hai. Uh-huh. They will look out for options like XTE where, you know, you tell them that, hey, you know, this is what you should do. These are the parameters to check for. This is how you keep yourself safe. So I think that's great. So now I think that, you know, I think there's a great play for you guys. So yeah, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm excited to find figure that out over the course of, I think, the last 15 minutes. <laughs> Uh, thank you, thank you so much, guys. Uh, thank yeah. you so much for being a part of the podcast. I think oh. uh, you know uh, this. This was kind of like a different one. We had some glitches here and there, but I think uh, to all all the ones uh, listening and watching, uh, 
uh, this podcast uh, i'm sorry for all the technical glitches but i hope you know uh, we took you through some interesting uh, uh, you know concepts and uh, ideologies and insights into the travel and tourism industry and how you know how how it can positively bounce back from what covid has handed over to us so yeah i hope this was an insightful podcast i hope you guys had fun i'm so sorry we have to yeah. do it like this i would have loved oh, to keep yes. thank you for inviting it was quite an like talking about thank us you so <laughs> that's great that's great thank you so much guys uh i will hopefully we'll we'll keep in touch again and i uh, wish xt all the very best for the coming year and i hope you know thank you guys get funded and you know you get big in the city and i can show off that they feature on my channel first so you know <laughs> yeah definitely driven driven the future awesome thank you so much guys bye bye all right bye bye goodbye